This is quite the welcome to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> oh, how does this feel? Oh my goodness. This well, has been a... It feels great to be back. It's been a long trip, but it's been a great trip. 6,107 miles, I think it was, right? Yeah, and now another five down the ICW, so let's add that on. Stephen and I just finished our trip, as you can see, arrived back in, F in Fort Lauderdale in January on our Bali 5.4 called Z3. And uh, we were absolutely delighted with the performance of the boat. Uh, we couldn't have been happier. However, there's always this one question that, that lingers over what the Bali is really like with the solid foredeck. And uh, in this video, we will show snippets from our trip across the Atlantic. And uh, hopefully you can see what a great feature it is on, on these boats. As far as I'm concerned, the solid foredeck is a feature that I want on a boat now. Now that I've actually experienced it, th this is a feature that would actually sell me the boat. I don't think it's controversial and I don't think that anybody uh, that, knows, that knows what they're talking about would argue with that. Um, you see most of the manufacturers now, their foredecks are getting bigger and their nets are getting smaller. Some of the other brands have got tiny little nets now, basically token nets. So, where we are is that the foredecks are getting bigger because we're able to build these boats now with much lighter construction. So you don't need nets to reduce weight. And we're able to create great living spaces on these boats. Because the decks remain bone dry, this becomes a highly usable area which is not usable on a boat with nets. So guys, what do you think about this forward deck? Wonderful. Nice and uh, no netting to mess around with. Nice padding. Wonderful. Woo. Well, I can tell you something. There's no other catamaran in existence that you can do this on. This is the most amazing space. It's pretty dry up here, eh? Never get a drop of water over the bow on this boat. Yeah, and yeah, what? The foredeck on this boat is really nice in that you're able to work at solid, you have you have living space, you're able to work. You're able to take sails down, you're able to deploy sails without having to wobble around on nets. It's actually really nice working the foredeck because before you used to walk on the nets and the nets would curl your toes up in the air. And this has got a nice beautiful sun deck on it, all padded and everything so you can move on the front deck, look up in the air. You don't have to worry about stepping down in little holes. It's all nice and flat. Well, I had to put those cushions on for you, Don. Oh, so now at your age, you, your toes are brittle. So yes. You definitely <laughs> wanted to have, uh, have a, nice, a, nice, a light, nice soft working area for you up front there. In case know? I fell down, I wouldn't get bruised. Yes, very valuable crew member is our Donald. Um, as far as comfort is concerned, you have a solid foredeck and you have an angled underbody, which is like an inverted uh, foil. So with forward motion, if the bow starts submerging, the actual foredeck, which is the section underneath here, will come into play and push the bows back out. Nets don't have buoyancy or angle, so they won't do that. 
and if the bows go down you're relying on the bows buoyancy to bring the boat back up in this case you have the strongest construction no cross beams or nets it's all solid so it's, so, so so you have a, a complete boat and when the bow stops uh, starts submerging huge dis dis uh, huge displacement is presented and pushes the bows back out so in my opinion this boat's really good in terms of surfing down waves and not pegging the bows Another major issue is that on boats with nets, especially if you're going to weather, you get a lot of spray coming up through the nets. Now in this boat, you get not a drop of water on the deck. So the helmsman standing up there is not getting blinded by spray and the decks remain bone dry. Um, the claims of pounding and noise are all unfounded because generally your converging bow waves and the seas will cause your, will cause your slamming, which happens further back. So, the uh, proponent, proponents that say that, well, you know, the net will pound and make noise, you know, I only have one thing to say, nonsense. Uh, you know, the only, the only noise you might get is the spray that would otherwise come through the nets, which is now being deflected downwards by the solid deck. Overall, the boat's very, very comfortable, rides beautifully, it's calm, it's, 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 it's smooth and it's very quiet. Although we did have one bad night, eh, Don? Or morning. The morning when we left Cartagena, right? I think it was Cartagena when we got the pound. I oh, know it was it was from Greenwich. Yeah, those were sh short, choppy seas, oh. but uh, even with the chop that we were going through, it didn't make any difference. No water ever came up over the front of the boat. <laughs> when we left Cane, we knew we had to make a, a weather window, and uh, we knew the wind was following, and we saw that we'd get about 25 knots in that section. And so, uh, you know, it was a surprise that we'd picked up. What was a surprise is that it got as high as 45 knots. Well, I felt very safe on the boat. The boat was fine. There wasn't any problem there. I kind of kept was keeping an eye on the wind indicator as it kept spiking higher and higher. I wondered when it was going to stop clapping. <laughs> we actually had all the canvas down and the wind was blowing through the bottom of the where the door is and blowing up into the cockpit and the rain that was pelting the uh, the plastic here sounded like gravel hitting it so it was cranking pretty hard um, it's really a remarkable boat and this design I think is, is, is kind of you know when I first saw it I thought where the hell are the nets but uh, I think I'm converted now so today we're talking about the big subject which is drainage on a solid four deck. Uh, in this case we're on a Bali 5.4 um, and we're going to show you how the drainage system works uh, which is extremely effective and uh, is, de is, is designed so that it can purge water very quickly in the event of water coming over the bows or onto the four deck. So firstly on this particular boat we have the anchor locker and the anchor locker has some limber holes down here. So here are the limber holes in this locker and this locker is designed to actually drain from the deck and the water will drop out of those limber holes. They face backwards so the forward motion of the boat doesn't allow water to come back filling into this locker. You will then notice that we have these spaces which stand the hatch off. I'm going to close it now so that you can actually see how it's uh, how it stands off all right so when we close this you will see over here that there's a huge gap all the way around with these spaces so when water comes onto the deck it rushes down these little these slots into the anchor locker and out those limber holes. So that's a secondary draining system in conjunction with the main draining system, the main scupper system. 
Now I'm going to explain the main scupper system of the boat. This scupper is at the lowest part of the foredeck, which means that all the water will run down here and will be purged through the scupper. How it works is there's this box here, and this box covers a hole probably about this size in the bridge deck, which is for water being drained straight out of. In the box on the sides are big holes. So as the water comes in and fills this well, the water rushes into these holes and drops straight out the bottom of the boat. So it's incredibly effective and very, very fast. Um, when, you're at, when we're at sea, the manufacturer recommends that we uh, keep this grating on. So let me show you the grating. The grating is like this. There's the grating in place. So the grating is what you would see when you're, at, when, when you're sailing. So if you take any water over it, the water will come uh, down here, drop through the grating, into the baffle, and drop straight out the bottom of the boat. So it's an extremely effective system. And uh, of course, you don't want to constantly have this grating that you have to walk over. So we have a cover for it. So in order to have to have this look nice like everywhere else and for, for calm weather sailing, they've manufactured a cover for the grating. And this is the cover. And this drops down like this. And now what we have is we have a nice cover that matches the rest of the, of, of the decking. But it still has all these slits over here which allow water to dry. Um, in speaking with uh, Xavier Fay, who's the designer, the required time to purge a foredeck that's full of water is 15 seconds. With this system, they are telling me 12 seconds to purge. And I believe it because I've actually took a wave over, over the bow and the water came rushing down and it disappeared really quickly. So the barley foredeck has been very controversial. A lot of people have had a lot of things to say about the foredeck. Uh, I think most of it uninformed and based on biases as opposed to uh, being pragmatic and actually sailing and understanding it. So my advice is don't knock it till you tried it. So while we showed you the solid pool deck on the 5.4, this is a common feature through the entire range. The body range comprises of the 5.4, there's a new 4.8 which is a scaled down version of this with a forward door, tilting back door. Uh, they have a 4.6 which is a brand new model, uh, there's a 4.3, there's a 4.1 which is their sailing range. They've also introduced the new cat space which is a 40 footer which is an entry level boat, very well priced for entry level. And they've also now gone into power. There's a Bali power cat. It's the Bali 4.3 Modion. So Bali now have a full range that covers all the different requirements for, for, different, for different people. And if you're interested in Bali, contact me and I'll be able to give you a lot more information.